all mother sentient beings, limitless as space, have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May they not be separate from the sacred happiness that is free of sorrow. May they rest in equanimity, free of attachment and aversion. Chapter 4 Stabilization and Insight Good friends, this teaching of mine is based on stabilization and insight. Do not make the mistake of considering stabilization and insight to be separate. Stabilization and insight are one entity, not two. Stabilization is the substance of insight. Insight is the function of stabilization. When it is itself insight, stabilization is in insight. When it is itself stabilization, insight is in stabilization. If you know what this means, that is balanced learning of stabilization and insight. Students of the way, do not say there is a difference between stabilization coming first and then producing insight, and insight coming first and then producing stabilization. Those who entertain this view are dualistic in their doctrine. If you talk good talk but are not good at heart, you have stabilization and insight in vain. Stabilization and insight are not balanced. If your heart and your talk are both good, and inside and outside are as one, then stabilization and insight are balanced. Self-enlightenment and cultivation are not to be found in argument. If you argue about precedence, then you are the same as deluded people. If you do not put a stop to contention, you are increasing egoism and have not detached from the four images of a self, a personality, a being, and a life. Good friends, what are stabilization and insight like? They are like a lamp and its light. If there is a lamp, there is light. Without a lamp, there is darkness. The lamp is the body of the light. The light is the function of the lamp. The names may be two, but in essence they are basically one and the same. The phenomena of stabilization and insight are also like this. The Master said to the assembly, Good friends, absorption in one practice means always acting with a unified direct mind in all situations, no matter what you are doing. The Pure Name Sutra says, The direct mind is the site of enlightenment. The direct mind is the pure land. Don't merely talk about directness while your mind acts deviously. Don't merely talk about absorption in one practice without a straightforward mind. Just act with a direct mind and have no clinging attachments to anything. Deluded people stick to the appearances of things. They cling to the idea of absorption in one practice as only meaning constantly sitting, unmoving, not letting the mind be aroused at random. They identify this with absorption in one practice, but those who make this interpretation are equivalent to inanimate objects. This is a condition that obstructs the way. Good friends, the way should be fluid, free-flowing. Why then do you stagnate? When the mind does not dwell on things, then the way is fluid. If the mind dwells on things, that is called self-binding. If you say constant sitting is right, that is contradicted by the fact that Shariputra was scolded by Vimalakirti for sitting quietly in the forest. Good friends, there are also people who teach sitting, gazing into the mind and visualizing purity without moving or getting up, positing merit from this. Confused people do not understand, so they grab onto this and become delusional. There are many like this. They teach each other this way, so we know it is a big mistake. The Master said to the assembly, Good friends, the true teaching originally is neither sudden nor gradual. It is human temperaments that may be quick or slow. People who are lost cultivate gradually while people who are awakened attain suddenly. When you know your own original mind and see your own original essential nature, then there is no difference. That is why the temporary terms sudden and gradual are set up. 
good friends. Since time immemorial, this school of ours has first established freedom from thought as the source, freedom from form as the substance, and freedom from fixation as the basis. Freedom from form means detachment from forms in the midst of forms. Freedom from thought means having no thought in the midst of thoughts. As for freedom from fixation, while the basic nature of humanity is in the midst of the world with good and bad, beauty and ugliness, enmity and familiarity, words and speech, offense and attack, deception and contention, one considers it all empty and does not think of realization, not thinking about the objects and the surroundings, if thought after thought, previous, present, and subsequent thoughts go on continuing uninterrupted. This is called bondage, when thought after thought does not dwell on things, then there is no bondage. Thus, freedom from fixation is basic. Good friends, outwardly being detached from all forms and appearances is called freedom from form. If you can be detached from forms and appearances, then the substance of things is pure. Thus, freedom from form is the substance. Good friends, when the mind is not influenced by objects, this is called freedom from thought. One is always detached from objects in one's own thoughts, and one does not arouse the mind over objects. If you just do not think of anything at all and get rid of all thoughts entirely, once all thoughts end, you die and come back to life someplace else. This is a big mistake. Those who study the way should think about it. If you do not know the intention of the teaching, you go wrong yourself and can mislead others also. Your self-delusion is not visible to you. You even misrepresent Buddhist scripture. That is why we establish freedom from thought as the source. Good friends, how do we establish freedom from thought as the source? Deluded people who only talk about seeing essential nature have thoughts about objects, then create false views based on these thoughts. All worldly troubles and erroneous ideas come from this. In our own essential nature, there is basically not a single thing that can be grasped. If you grasp anything supposedly bad or good, this is a worldly trouble, a false view. Therefore, this teaching establishes freedom from thought as the source. Good friends, what does freedom from nullify? What does thought think of? Freedom from means freedom from dualism, a mind without all sorts of worldly troubles. Thought means a thought of the original nature of reality as such. Reality as such is the substance of thought. Thought is the function of reality as such. The intrinsic nature of reality as such produces thought. It is not the eyes, ears, nose, or tongue that can think. Reality as such has an essential nature whereby it produces thought. If there were no eyes or ears and no form or sound in reality as such, it would decompose at once. Good friends, the essential nature of reality as such produces thought, though the six senses have perception and cognition. The real essential nature is not affected by myriad objects or appearances. It is always independent. Therefore, scripture speaks of being able to distinguish the characteristics of all things while remaining unmoved in ultimate truth.